so in last uh, few lectures we have learned about uh, the basic alphabets of C++ uh, we learned about uh, the key keywords and then we also learned about uh, operators how uh, different kind of data types which are very essential part of C++ uh, so that uh, basic things being completed today uh, I would like to emphasize uh, on a new kind of thing uh, which is uh, needed for uh, conditional programming so we, we did see, see, see programming is just like a, like a life flowing in you in a usual manner but sometimes you get situations where you need to do something other than the usual situation you need to take decisions uh, depending on the context uh, etc so that is what uh, we will learn today uh, today we are going to discuss a few things about control structures uh, how how do we control the flow of the c++ programs so here we are uh, we are discussing control structures today and uh, control structures are uh, which control the flow of a program so the order in which the statements are executed in a program is called the flow of control as we all know how the control flows the control of the program flows like uh, you must have done a lot of uh, programs now for I, I think four or four or five basic programs you have already done and there you learned that how your computer is uh, uh, proceeding uh, it, it is proceeding line by line sometimes uh, so flow of control is usually sequential it is a sequential flow so when one statement is executed the control automatically goes to the next statement in line so that is the sequential structure it is in sequence it is in a line but sometimes what happened that we need that the flow of control to be non-sequential I, I want to skip some statements or I want to do some more things uh, depending on a condition so in that kind of situation which we will learn very soon uh, we use control structures how to control the usual flow of program so what is a control structure it is a special statement again C++ is all consists of statements and uh, words uh, and uh, just like any other language so it's a special statement which transfers control to a statement other than the uh, next one other than the uh, one statement which physically comes next so other than the next one it goes somewhere else so usually we have two types of control structures in uh, uh, in, in uh, c plus plus one are called selection structures and other type are called repetition structures so as you can uh, see and you can guess also the repetition structures are structures which repeat themselves for a certain number of times and selection structures are some state so those kind of statements which uh, work as per some condition uh, given a condition you do you select certain outputs so first uh, we will discuss selection statements so what the programs use the c++ programs they use selection statements to choose among various courses of actions so we select depending on one condition we select uh, a particular one out of many possibilities so if, if you if you want to visit uh, somewhere let's say these days in corona times you cannot visit anywhere but suppose you have vacations you want to visit somewhere so you, you can select uh, depending on your condition you can say I can go to Ladakh or I can go to uh, Switzerland I can go to China I can go to uh, southern India I can go to western India and so on so depending on your condition uh, so selection so you will select something uh, similarly in a C++ language it provides three types of selection statements there are one is called the if selection statement and you can say uh, you can easily guess what if would mean if something is satisfied then do a particular thing other is the if else statement if something is satisfied you do things otherwise you do something else else and the third one is the switch statement it's just like a where it's a, it's, a, it's like an electric switchboard there are various switches on the board and you press one switch one uh, electric appliance will work maybe a bulb will shine 
if another with another switch a fan will run with another switch a treadmill would run another switch a, a, a table lamp would uh, run and so on uh, so that so that is uh, called the switch statement first of all we will discuss uh, the if statement so what is the if selection statement if it it performs an action if a condition is true or it skips the action if the condition is false so after the if uh, word we give something in parenthesis if that particular condition is satisfied or if it is true then a particular the next statement will be uh, performed or if uh, an action will be performed otherwise that particular action will be skipped it will be uh, overlooked by the program on the other hand if else selection statement it performs an action if a condition is true and performs a different action if the condition is false so in if else statement there are two kind of actions will be given if this is true do this else do something else in a simple if statement if it is just if this thing is true then do otherwise don't do it there there is no alternative statement so th those are the two kind of if statements the switch the third one the switch selection statement performs one of the many different actions as i told you it's just like a switchboard electric switchboard many different actions are available on a switchboard with depending on which switch you press so depending upon the value of an integer expression and whatever value comes out different actions are performed now for syntax uh, the grammar for this uh, these things are like that the syntax for the if statement is if as i told you in the parenthesis the expression this is this will be evaluated if this expression is true then statement one will be uh, carried out otherwise it will be skipped for if else the syntax for if else will be if this expression is true do a statement one else do a statement two okay if this is not true then the program's control will not come here it will go there so the expression is parenthesis is a bool data type so it will evaluate to either true or false and so other, if it is not a bool data type it will be remember the data type conversion it will be coerced it will be forced to be to a bool data type so if that expression evaluates to zero it will be considered as false if this expression this expression is evaluated to non zero it is considered as true so non zero is true zero is false so in if, if a statement what happens if the expression is true then the statement one is executed otherwise no action will be performed in the if else statement if the expression is true then statement one is executed otherwise statement two is executed so i'll give you some examples of if and if is if else uh, thing uh, there are say like these two two lines uh, just concentrate on these two lines if in the parenthesis i wrote number greater than zero number is uh, some other number which is already defined in c plus plus as maybe integer or whatever then see out the number is positive and n line so this is the statement so what will happen if the number suppose i input the number as five five is greater than zero then on the on your computer monitor the program will write the number is positive and will go to the next line if now if i enter minus 5 then this line will be skipped it will come to the next line whatever is the next line in the code okay another example is these four lines uh, if number is greater than or equal to 0 then i write see out the number is non negative else the number is negative so now it considers two things so uh, even if it will work for 0 it will work for uh, 5 it will work for minus 6 all all possibilities are there suppose i, I give minus 6 so what will happen if number is greater than or equal to 0 no so it will go to the else statement it will say the number is negative so that is how you controlled the sequence of uh, the flow uh, in your program it has skipped depending on this condition your program has has skipped this particular statement another example these four lines you define two integers d and n then you say okay enter two positive integers d and n then you accept an input from the keyboard c in d as well as n so you input two numbers then you can calculate if n modulo d 
So n modulo d is uh, see I told you if it is zero, then it is true, then false. If it is not zero, then it is true. So if n modulo d is zero, that means d completes the divide n the numerator or d is for denominator. Then say c out does not d does not divide n. If this is true, the remainder is so n modulo d means it gives z remainder will be. Uh, zero So it's, it's false. So it said d does not divide n so it will not say that it does not divide n. If it is not false If it is true, uh, then it say it does not divide n If it if the statement is true, then it will say d does not divide n if the statement is false It will say it will not say anything because I didn't write the d divides n or something It will not say anything. It will just go to the next statement whatever the next statement is so you should try to uh, do this and see what uh, comes out to try different examples on your computer on your own computer input these uh, four lines with of course the usual uh, first few lines of your program which are necessary in a program and of course the return statement return zero and something like that then see what what are the outputs so uh, programming can only be learned by doing programming not just by listening to me or uh, reading a book that will not teach you any programming it's just uh, like learning any other language you need to speak the language so here in c++ you need to uh, make programs in order to learn this uh, language and uh, make mistakes see what were the mistakes it doesn't matter if you make mistakes make mistakes because that is how you will learn by making mistakes now if and if else statements expect only one statement after the if or else conditions so what uh, happens if i have more than one statements i want to for a given condition i want to carry out more than one single statement then i need to uh, confine these uh, all these statements in a curly bracket in the braces so so therefore it is a block of statements is to be output for a condition all those statements are going to be put in a block so I'll make my program like that if expression which is to be evaluated and then in the braces statement set one. So this can be one or more statements. This can be thousand lines. This can be ten lines. This can be five lines. Anything else again. Uh, if But remember if it is a single statement you do not need to put braces. But if it is multiple statement then you need to put braces here. So that is necessary. Another interesting thing with the if statements are that you can nest them that what is means what is the meaning of nested if statement that means one thing is nested over the other so uh, that, that means that uh, you you have uh, within if statement you have another if statement so if so if you have multiple conditions then you can use um, nested if statements if it's expression one is true then it goes to this one then it checks upon the expression 2 if that is also true then it carries out the statement 1 otherwise it will not carry out this particular statement so these are called nested if statement so this is the way we uh, use the nested if statements another example can be so I, I, I can put two statements here if x is greater than 10 and then in the next line if x modulo 2 is equals equals 0 see we are comparing this this is a condition so uh, the computer will evaluate x modulo 2 and compare with 0 if it is equal to 0 then if both these conditions satisfy then we will say c out x and then is an even number greater than 10 so x is even as well as it is greater than 10 so that is how we are uh, doing this now if else statement can also be nested and the nested if, if, if else statements the test for multiple cases not only single case but the test for multiple cases by placing if else statements inside other if else statement so suppose uh, i am trying to grade people uh, uh, on the basis of their marks in their exams so i say if greater is, grade is greater than or equal to 90 see out as a else if it is not greater than or equal to 90 then i go to this line else if greater is greater than or equal to 80 see out this else if greater is greater than or equal to 70 see out c else if 
grade is greater than or equal to 60, see out as D. So a nested if else statement, what it does, it can perform much faster than a series of if statements because uh, it has a possibility of early ex exit. If this condition is satisfied, it, it will not evaluate these statements. See, if I remove else statements, it will give me the same result, but uh, similar result, not exactly same. I, there is a big difference between this else uh, if you remove the else. But main ex ex advantage is that suppose grade, somebody got 95. So I'll say, okay, greater is greater than or equal to 90. It, I give him A and then immediately come out of all these else's. I don't even see those things. My computer will not even see this statement because these else's are combined with this particular if. It does not have to go line by line. So there is a possibility of early exit after one of the condition is satisfied. If this is satisfied, then I, I exit here. So I will skip a few lines in my program. So it will be much faster. Now, but sometimes uh, uh, if you don't use uh, else statements properly, then you might uh, get stuck into it. That is called a dangling else problem. So in a nested if else statement, C com the compiler for C++ always uh, make a, makes a pair of an else statement with the immediately preceding if, if it does not already have an else paired with it. So whatever is the immediately preceding a if, it will make a pair. So that sometimes creates some problem. So uh, unless you tell the compiler to do something else by placement of braces. So use of braces are very, very necessary. Uh, most of the time, most of the time you must use the use of braces. Like in this statement, uh, I give if x is greater than 5 and then I say if y is greater than 5, see out x and y are greater than 5, else see out this. See, the programmer wants that th this, if, if this else statement, uh, else uh, should be paired with this, but I did not tell that. By default, this else statement will be paired with this, the immediately preceding if. So you may get false result. So uh, since it is a logical error, uh, you will not be able to detect it through your compiler. Only thing is your results will be wrong. So the correct way of uh, achieving what you want to achieve in this particular thing is, if x is greater than 5, then within braces you put that and else this. Now since this if statement ends here with the braces, so and this braces belong to this particular if statement, this else will pair with this if statement. Now it will be, output will be x is less than or equal to 5. Otherwise in this case, it uh, may write x and y are greater than 5 or something. Uh, you, you can try that what this does and then you will be able to try try to put these three lines in your compiler and separately these three lines in your compiler and see what is the difference between this output and this output so you will learn uh, something new thing now this uh, diagram will summarize uh, the flow of control in the if statement it's very easy to understand uh, so the program flow comes from here checks upon a condition if condition is true, it goes to one or more statements, then it goes to the next particular line in your uh, uh, sequence. If the condition is false, then it skips that, it will directly go to the next line. So that is uh, very, very simple stuff. Uh, you just need to learn the syntax, which is also very simple. So I hope you will be able to learn if and if. Similarly, the, uh, the the diagram for if else statement will be that this is the flow diagram and you come in the program to check the condition within the parenthesis if it is true carry out this statement set if it is false carry out this statement set and then come out of the uh, control and go to the next particular line so that is the condition that is the flow of control for the if else statement okay now there is a, a interesting uh, operator which is called a, which is a, which is a conditional operator and it is a short form of uh, basically if else it is a and it is interesting but it is a ternary operator ternary means it needs four uh, operands so uh, 
it needs uh, expression one. So uh, sorry, uh, it needs a uh, three operator. It's not a quadrinary operator. It's a ternary operator. Uh, not, not so unary, binary, and ternary. So ternary operator will need uh, three operands: one here, one after the question mark, and one after the colon sign. Uh, it's not semicolon; it's colon. So it's a, it behaves similar to if else statements. So uh, and it's uh, it has a form of expression one, question mark, expression two, colon, expression three. So what is the meaning? The first operand is is a condition expression one is a condition second operand is the value of the entire expression if the condition is true so you 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 check upon this condition do this if it is true and do this if it is false so if this is true do this else do this so it's a, it's a short form of uh, if else statement if you have a, it's a, it's a small things to be evaluated then you can use this uh, conditional operator question mark colon and the syntax is this if this expression 1 is true expression 2 is evaluated otherwise expression 3 is evaluated so very simple stuff so let's the one of the example of this uh, conditional operator may be uh, you have a C out with the output operator uh, within parenthesis you have greater grade greater than or equal to 60 question mark passed colon failed so if grades are greater than 60, you write passed. If they are less than 60, you write failed. Or you can find out maximum of uh, two given numbers. This is the most uh, common use of this particular conditional operator. If x is greater than y, then x. Max is equal to, if x is greater than y, then x, otherwise y. So the value of max will be either x or y, depending on the condition of this condition if this can if x is greater than y then max max will be assigned a value x if x is less than y the max is assigned a value y so max will be the higher of the those two numbers so uh, so that is a very very common use of uh, using conditional operator which is a ternary operator remember it needs three operators three operands now the switch statement is uh, uh, another uh, statement which is a selection statement it is a multiple selection statement so, so switch can use multiple selection it allows us to implement a sequence of uh, similar alternatives or parallel alternative it is similar to a nested if statement anything you can do with a switch statement you can also do with a nested if statement what it does it tests a value against a set of constants and the the syntax is switch given this expression which will evaluate to a, a constant or an integer constant so then you write this switch and case and break they are all keywords uh, in c++ default is also a keyword so the keywords are written in bold and these are the words which uh, a programmer would write so expression would be written by a programmer this constant one will be written by a programmer colon statement list one so if this expression evaluates to constant one if it is equal to constant one, then this statement list will be carried out if they are in braces. If it evaluates to constant two, then this statement list will be carried out and so on. It can have several such thing. And by default, if it is not, if it does not evaluate to any of these constants, then by default, it will go to another statement list, which can be statement one or two or whatever, a new statement. And break means as soon as this, this why do I give a break here? Break means as soon as this thing is uh, executed, if I have a break, then it will come out of this braces sign. If I do not put a break here, then it will keep on working on the next statement also. If I don't put break, putting a break will make it come out of the uh, switch uh, body. So what does it do? It evaluates the expression and then looks for its value among the case constants. If the value is found among the constant listed, then the statements is the corresponding statement list are executed. Now default is optional. If you want to give a default, you can. Otherwise, you can skip it also. The uh, default only thing is all these case constants must be different from each other. They should be distinct. You cannot have same cases and doing two things, right? 
So one of the example is again uh, finding uh, grade letters for a given marks. So if I say enter your grades, then you switch in the grade, say, yeah, then you can input your marks. Then I say switch grades divided by 10. Suppose you have 95, you have something. Case 10, do nothing. Case 9, your grade is an A, break. Case 8, if this expression evaluates to 9, then you give A. If it evaluates to 8, you, you carry out this statement. If it evaluates to 7, you carry out this statement and so on. And default is your grade is fail and uh, so if it is less than six then it will be a fail so that is how the switch statement will work depending on these constant value of the expression if it evaluates to one of these constants the corresponding statement would be executed so we learned today uh, how, how, how some, some, some of the control structures we learn uh, like if statement and the switch statement if else statement uh, like if if uh, something is happening then what your program should do that kind of thing we learned uh, a little bit so some of the control structures we learned and next time we will uh, do some more control structures uh, see you then